Hello, thank you for attending this webinar. My name is So Young Choi. Uh, I'm a research assistant professor in the Department of Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering at KAIST in Korea. Now I will talk about my recent research. The title is Three-Dimensional Label-Free Visualization and Connification of Polyhydrous Alkaloids in Individual Bacterial Cell in its Native State. This is about the bacterial plastic polyhydrous alkanoids, which are getting a lot of attention these days. In this webinar, I'm going to show you how the Tomocubus technology was successfully applied to observe and analyze the living cells, accumulating the important bioplastic polyhydrous alkanoids. As we already know, plastic pollution is a growing problem as one of the most pressing global environment challenges of our time. More than 300 million tons of plastics are produced in a year, and the enormous amount of waste plastics are discarded and ends up in the oceans. As the most sensitive plastics cannot be degraded in nature, the accumulated plastic waste seriously affect the ecosystems. In addition, the small plastic pieces, we call microplastics, have become another serious issue threatening the human health. So to tackle this plastic problem, the biodegradable or recyclable plastic material are being actively developed. Among them, what I'm going to talk today, polyhydrous alkanoids, is uh, one of the promising substitutes for the synthetic plastics because polyhydrous alkanoid is a biodegradable and bio-based plastics. Polyhydrous alkanoid, generally called PHA, is a special type of polyester which is accumulated in numerous microorganisms. In nature, several bacteria accumulate PHA as a carbon and energy storage material. As shown in these figures, microscopic figure, this bioplastic material is accumulated as a form of granules in the cell cytoplasm. Today, PHA has drawn great attention because it has similar material properties with polyethylene and polypropylene, which are the most widely used plastics. But PHA is now used for various applications such as daily plastic products, disposable plastic bags, packaging and food containers. More importantly, this, place, this plastic material can be biodegraded with good biocompatibility that makes PHA suitable materials for even medical fields. Uh, this diagram shows the global bioplastic productions. PHA is here. Uh, last year, about 35,000 tons of PHA was produced. And it is predicted that the PHA production capacity will significantly increase within the next five years. So as a next generation bioplastics, more advanced technologies in PHA research should be required. From the first discovery of PHA, there are great advances in this research field. Now PHA is commercially produced. However, the spatial temporal characteristics in a live bacterial cell are not well understood. Several techniques such as fluorescence microscopy, transmission electron microscopy, and electron cryotomography have provided information on the PHA granules of several bacteria. However, these previous studies provided only two-dimensional images and also a non-native state of the cell due to the pretreatment process used. Because of these technical limitations, many of the details for the formation and characteristics of in vivo PHA granules are still unknown. Therefore, we introduced the optical diffraction tomography aka ODT for the in-depth analysis of PHA producing bacteria. This is the schematic representation of this research. 
using Tomocubus Oddity Microscopy System and Software, the refractive index RI distribution for the microbial cell sample can be obtained in the three dimensions. In this study, we selected uh, two representative bacterial strains. First is Cupriabius necaru, which is the base, which is the best studied native PHC producer. And the second is the recombinant E. coli strain, which is the engineered strain to produce PHC by introducing the Cupriabius necatur's PHC biosynthesis genes. For the two strain, we did comparative analysis to capture the unique characteristics of PHC granules. Because C. necator is a native PHC producer, it has several PHC related enzyme and proteins. However, for E. coli, as a non native PHC producer, there is no report about the enzyme and protein related to the PHC granule. Thus, we expected that the granules are differently processed in the two bacteria, and we wanted to capture the meaningful differences. First, we performed the identification of the individual PHC granules by the ODT systems. When the cell accumulating PHC granules were subjected to the ODT analysis, we obtained the reconstructed 3 dry distribution uh, pure cell, and also observed the distinctly high RI regions inside each cell, presumably PHC granules. To verify that the high RI region correspond to PHC granule, the RI tomogram was compared with the fluorescence images of the same cell, labeled with nine red dye. The dye uh, has been routinely used for PHC staining. When the threshold RI for PHC granule was set above 1.39, the emulated fluorescence images made from the RI distributions were consistent with the actual fluorescence images in granular location, morphology, and the signal intensities. Thus, through the comparison of three RI tomograms and the conventional fluorescence images, we conducted that the RI region above 1.39 correspond to the PHA granule. After identification the MBPH granule, the quantitative analysis was conducted. To understand the formation and growth of PH granules, the C necator cells were cultured for 24 hours to reach their maximum PH accumulation and subjected to ODT analysis at eight hours intervals. These are the representative images during the 24 hour cultivations. Uh, and also, we also did the same thing for the E. coli cells. E. coli cells were cultured for uh, 48 hours for their maximum PHT accumulations. For both cells, we clearly observed that the change of cell morphology and accumulation of PHT granules according to the culture time. Based on the RI distribution for individual cells, we can measure and calculate the physical parameter as follows. First of all, from the RI distribution, cell volume and PHA volume can be measured. And we simply get the non-PHA volume is cell volume minus PHA volume. And next, the PHA weight can be calculated by multiplying PHA volume and PHA density. The important thing is that we didn't use the constant value for the PHA density, like average PHA density value. Instead, we did instead we determine the PHA density based on the assumption of the linear relationship between the density and RI values. And then we also calculate the cell weight, which is the sum of PHA weight and non-PHA weight. For the non-PHA weight, which is the weight of the cell cytoplasmic space, was obtained by integrating the biological solution concentration over non-PHA volume. These are quantification results for C-necator cells. 
uh, four statistical analyses about 100 cells were randomly selected at each sampling time. As I explained, we obtained the values of cell volume, length, PHA weight, or cell weight, PHA contents, and PHA density for a single cells. Also for the equi cells, the quantification were done like this. From the individual cell data obtained, we perform the correlative analysis to examine the distinctive features of individual cell and PHA granules. Given that both cells show the increase of average cell volume with culture time, the dependence of cell size on PHA accumulation was evaluated by making these get the plot of PHA granule weight versus cell volume. And these get plus shows different trends between two strains. The coli get plot revealed a partially linear relationship, implying the in vivo pH accumulation affecting the cell volume. Because the average cell lengths are not much different with the culture time, we consider that the changes of cross sectional area of the cells. We get the get plot of cross sectional area of the cell versus pH during contents. In the equi case, the cross sectional area shows a uh, tendency to increase as pH granules were accumulated, and it was prominent for the cell with more than 15% of pH grain contents. These results indicate that the equi cells are, equi cells are getting thicker with rise amount of pH, pH accumulation, while the Sinecator cell did not exhibit these characteristics. Next, we also question that whether the granule have locational preference within the cells. We investigate the spatial distribution by considering two parameter, polarity and centrality. Polarity is the factor indicating how close to PHA granule locate from the cell pole. Thus, it is defined as the ratio of extra distance between cell center and PHA granule to the distance between cell center and cell pole corresponding to a half of the cell length. And other factor centrally indicate how close the PHA granule locate from the cell center. It is defined as the ratio of the distance of the PHA granule from cell membrane to the distance between the long center axis and the cell membrane at its cross section here. Based on these definitions, polarity and centrality have a range of zero to one. And the higher polarity and centrality indicate that the pH granules are located near the pole and long center axis of the cells, respectively. As shown in these graphs, polarity and centrality change with the culture time. Especially compared with Sinecator cells, the E. coli cells showed higher polarity value at the early period of the cultivation. To further examine the polarity value, we may disk at the plot uh, showing the correlation between polarity and pH grain contents. Both get the plot shows that the polarity value has a wide range of 0 0.8 at low pH contents and converge it into a relatively narrow range of 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 as pH contents increase. Uh, we can think it is obvious that the polarity decreases as pH grain occupied more volume within the cells. Uh, considering the cells with low pH grain contents, this part were in the early phase of grain formation. The wide range of polarity impl implies that the formation of pH granules can occur anywhere in the cell cytoplasm in terms of the polarity value. Interestingly, the polarity for equi cells seem to be negatively correlated with the PHA contents, while the Sinecator does not show any noticeable correlations. 
The correlation is more clear in these new scatter plots. These were made to contain only the cells which are longer than the average length of generalized cells. Because the polarity indicates the distance of KT granule to the cell pool, considering the cell lengths. So we assume that the longer cell shows the polarity differences more clearly. Uh, in the case of E. coli, the negative, co the negative correlation is more clearly observed, while the plug for C. negative cell still does not show any correlations. The decreasing polarity trend indicates that the PHA granules tend to be localized to the cell poles, even though they can be formed anywhere in cell cytoplasms. Now go back to this slide. For the centrality, the two doctoral species show similar results. The average central value are 0.7 at the early stage, and the value changes to about 0.6 over time. This result indicates that PHG granule localization was biased toward the cell center rather than the cell membrane. Most PHG granules in both strains were localized in the middle between the cell center and membrane. It implies that the granule exists in a specific location within the cell that randomly exists in terms of centrality. Uh, next, uh, furthermore, we wanted to track a single cell to capture the whole process of KT granule formation with cell growth. It might explain how the polarity difference between two strains are occurred. Using Tomocubus technology, we succeeded in making time-lapse movies showing the growth of cells and KT granule for the first time. For uh, C. necator cells, we obtained the two movies for the different culture medium. One is nitrogen source limited, and the other is nutrient rich medium, which contains sufficient nitrogen source. The two conditions differ in that nitrogen limited is good for PHA production, but nutrient rich condition is good for cell growth rather than PHA production. This, uh, the movie shows the actual in vivo dynamics of PHA granule synthesis and degradation in living cells. Uh, even considering the possible existence of small optical perturbation caused by the cell movement. Uh, now let's see the movies. The PHA granule cells uh, were generally localized throughout the cell cytoplasm, and the door cells generated by cell division could divide up the PHA granules. Uh, in the right movie, given that this condition is more suitable for cell growth, the cell shows more active cell division with larger cells than the left cell. Uh, however, similar to the left, the PHA granules were localized throughout the cell cytoplasm, and the dollar cell generated by cell division contain a similar amount of PHA granules. Uh, next, this is the time length movie for the coli cells. It is distinctly different to the C. necator cells, the coli cells. Uh, elongated toward the upper side of the granules and then divided into two cells. So one dorsal cell contained the majority of granules while the other cell had almost no granules. Also, it should be noted that not all PHA granules are formed at the polar region. Some granules are uh, formed in the middle of the cell. However, after cell division, the PHA granules tend to be localized near a new pole of the dora cell. This results in eventual localization of PHA granules near the polar region. And this movie uh, corresponds well to the result that the coli cell shows higher polarity and negative correlation between polarity and PHA contents uh, in the previous slide. Look at the right side, the dynamic changes shown in the time-lapse movie were also quantitatively analyzed at the individual cell level. 
Based on these observation, we can draw this schematic representation for the PT granular localization during the cell division process. In native PT producer, there is a granular associated protein which controls the formation and localization of PT granular during cell division by interacting with PT granule and the bacterial nuclei. It contributes to the relatively equal distribution of PHA granule to the daughter cells. On the other hand, PHA granule and E. coli have been processed differently. Our observation in E. coli is similar to the previous studies of the protein aggregates that are located with polar bias with a symmetric inheritance because of the nucleoid exclusion. Nucleoid indicate the chromosomal DNA, and in terms of the nucleoid exclusion against the PHA granulion case, we can assume that the localization of PHA granules in E. coli is likely to be governed by the competition with the chromosome for intracellular space to ensure the proper cell division. As a result, these phenomena, the granules push it to the cell Hole might be occurred. Uh, although in consideration of time I couldn't talk, these differences were so examined for the other native and non-native bacterial strain, Pseudomonas putida and recombinant Klebsiella pneumoniae strain. And also these results suggest that our finding on distinctive feature for PHA grain formation are not limited just the two strain. It can be also applied for the other native and non-native bacteria strain. Uh, in conclusion, I would like to say that this research provides a deeper understanding of pH green formation during the cellular growth and cell division process. And in addition, this OGT-based technique will be very helpful to develop the bioplastic cell factory by monitoring the detailed behavior of cell and granule, and also quantifying the production rapidly. Uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for your attention.